From their first meeting in Belfast, Ireland, they made beautiful music together. Hymn revivalists Keith and Kristen Getty have released four albums and garnered incredible success while enriching our worship with an acclaimed repertoire of 21st century hymns just when you thought they disappeared. And now we have a stirring live worship CD of modern and traditional hymns. But before we hear about all this, the best surprise was hearing that you were sending us a family picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. That did not compute. We had no, at least I had not even the hint of your great expectations. And she's two and a half years old. Yes, she is. Eliza. Eliza Joy. joy. Mm -hmm. And she is a joy. She is. She is the joy of our lives. <laughs> yep. And she um, looks just like her daddy. Has red hair, so she's very Irish and has the spirit and temper to match it. So we're being challenged every day. Well, I have <laughs> another picture of your favorite golf partner, Keith. Okay. Now that, uh, yeah. We're starting her young. Oh. So she can develop that competitive spirit because the red hair wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> and can you, have you missed the obvious? You we are just a couple of months away from a second daughter, so oh. we're getting very excited about that. So we're looking forward to that, looking forward to Eliza having a little sister, and she's very excited about it. So. You know, I hope this isn't too personal, but I just feel I want to share this insight that for both of these pregnancies, you had to come off the road. Right. You had to chill acts right. a little, <laughs> didn't you? Exactly right. Yes, let's talk about that. <laughs> well, it might be helpful to people dealing with infertility yeah. that this was a key preparation for parenthood. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't a, you know, straightforward. We had to be patient and we came off the road, as you said. We both um, don't just work at our work, we live it and we needed to sort of step away from it for a little while, which was good for us even beyond the gift of children, um, just to have some time and to reflect and it, it helped with our writing, it refreshed us and not that's not necessarily what we were thinking at the time because it was a bit of a burden and I know there are people that have a much more difficult story than us, but it wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't straightforward, it wasn't easy, and we're just very grateful. Thank mm. you for being willing to share that. I didn't even <laughs> warn you that I was going to go there. And I, I just, this is just something I have to do. The boots, they're just too beautiful not to let you see what a yeah. grandmother, I your know. grandmother, Kristen, yes. My what a funky lady. I know, she was fantastic. She took me out whenever we were home in Ireland this past summer and she said, I want to get you something nice. And I said, okay, Granny. <laughs> so I was thrilled to get them. Wonderful. Well, there's so much about you that if I knew, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Ireland, home for both of you, but you came over here to America, Ohio first. That's right. And then a few years later moved to Nashville, where you've been since... 2011, I think. 2011. 2011. Yeah. 2010. Maybe time. Yeah, we arrived in Nashville, and two days later, was, find out Eliza. It was 2010. Was away, it was 2010. So. Lovely. Yeah. So, so um, uh, we can, uh, the only problem is we can't we can't drive to Niagara anymore. Yeah, we oh. When we lived in Ohio, we used to go there for long weekends, and now. Sorry. I know we missed that. Keep coming back to us. We're nice <laughs> and close. Um, your mission has been winsome and effective. Um, it, rescuing him classics and writing new hymns, modern hymns, and I love, I love this. Singable theology, a feast of thought, imagination, and beauty. You are taking this, you, some one of you must have, and, I, and it's what we enjoy in this folk classical style that uh, has gone everywhere from uh, Franklin Graham's Crusades to the Royal Albert Hall in London, England. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful gift to the church, and it's being received so well. Don't Thank be shy. You. I know Thank it's true. Come on. What, let me just remind people, in Christ Alone, certainly one of my favorite modern hymns, the number one most sung hymn in the UK since 2006, in the top 20 in the US, Canada, and Australia, it'll probably never come off that chart. <laughs> so, who knows? <laughs> Yeah, so that was, uh, we were very fortunate. I, I had the privilege of meeting a man called Stuart Townend, who is, who is not a, a foreigner to people in, in, in Ontario for sure. And um, he's from England. And he had written a hymn called How Deep the Father's Love. And it moved me so much that I said, I would love to write songs like this my whole life. And he said, well, let's just write one and see how it goes. And so the one song we wrote was in Christ Alone. So well, that's got us started. And really that was the, from then on, uh, Stuart really was my writing partner, but really in many ways my teacher. And he was, he was older and really, really helped us a lot. And then Kristen as well. So we're, we're very grateful to him for that, that contribution he made. 
that um, that or that that influence that he was in us, and it it is it has just grown from there. Um, so, we're uh, we, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do. You know, I just every day. Um, we love the idea that throughout history, God's people have learned their faith through what they sing. God's people have been joined together of every generation through what they sing. And, and if we can have the privilege of being able to add to that as creative people, I, I don't think there's any, any, any higher calling in life, and I'm sure, for, certainly not for us. Two key ingredients in what you do. Well, I'm going to say three. Um, certainly the musicianship, Kristen's voice too. Um, but singable, singable and loaded with theology. We're not singing those same ditty words around and around and around. We're getting real solid meat. I, I'm sure it's you, Keith, who said, you know, we don't go out of the Sunday service singing the sermon. We go out, ideally, singing maybe the last song that we sang. And it's reminding us, it's enriching us all week. Yeah, well, words themselves are very important. Each generation in life, whether it's socially, politically, morally, or anything else, don't go from north to south. Words change meaning, and, and, and things generally move, and it's how life has always been, and words are important. And it's why, as I said, even back to the Old Testament history books, God's people learned their heritage, their identity, the story of redemption and who God was through the songs they sang. So it is so important for all of us, whether we're parents, pastors, worship leaders, elders, whatever it is, that both the music that we listen to and especially the music that we sing in church is rich and that is deep and that is breeding deep believers because the, 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 the next generation I think is, I think the generation we live in is the most exciting generation ever to be a Christian, but it is without doubt the most challenging generation as well. The CD notes are a gift in themselves. I want to talk about the CD. Lots of quotes from church leaders. Right. Uh, you quote Martin Luther as saying, the gift of language combined with the gift of song was given to man that he should proclaim the word of God through music. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, well, Luther, Luther believed in the Reformation by the preaching and singing of the word. So he believed that the singing basically affirmed or completed the sermon. So that the two should be that closely hand in hand. They certainly were not separate. And of course, he did that little classic, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. It'll never, it'll never last. <laughs> worth, uh, worth mentioning. <laughs> now, this, um, I'm known to gush occasionally. I could gush here because this is, this is a live worship experience. I'm getting full-eyed thinking about it. That uh, two-thirds of your congregation men right. at an unusual event I don't know about the Gospel Coalition, so please tell us about this project. Kristen. Yeah. Well, it's the first live album we've ever done. We did it back in the spring. The Gospel Coalition is a fantastic um, organization. They have conferences every couple of years. They bring together some of the greatest preachers and Bible teachers, like Dr. Um, Don Carson and Tim Keller and various others that we have enjoyed um, personally and in, turn, in our own faith walks for many years. And so very excited to be able to collaborate with them in an event. And we chatted through this idea of doing a live album. We hadn't done one before. And the songs were written to be sung by groups of people and so we've done several studio albums over the years and we've enjoyed those and um, but it's really great to have a recording of the songs the way they're meant to be with lots of people singing them and as you said there's lots of men <laughs> I don't think I've ever sung with so many men before well they're singing so well <laughs> yes that the a cappella numbers where all yeah. the instruments and your fabulous instruments mm -hmm. just quit right you've got beautiful harmony strong voices it is yeah I was the one I was a a great process from start yeah, to finish. Really wonderful, wonderful Probably one of the really. easiest ones too because once you record it you're pretty much done <laughs> in the studio. You can linger and linger on all sorts of things whereas this that captures a moment in time and it was a very powerful conference and it attracts a lot of um, pastors and church leaders and represents um, people from 49 states in America and how many countries? It was, um, it was, I think, was it 70 countries? Yeah. It was a lot it was of countries. Yeah. All in Orlando, reach. Florida. Yeah, yeah they had a whole live internet thing going on and simultaneous translations. It was an incredible thing. So it was a wonderful and a great privilege to be part of it and to, and to use the hymns in that way and, and hopefully. And let's just say that, see, you picked some of the classics. Um, uh, holy, 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 all hail the power of Jesus' name. Right. And of course, we have in Christ alone, the power of the cross, some of our favorites from you, some arrangements that are a great surprise and delight, like the song, 
that you're about to sing. This is a modern hymn. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you've seized from Hollywood uh, <laughs> to, to, uh, to launch this one. They sound great musicians with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think most of our arrangements are really a product of just being surrounded by people who I think pretty much are all cleverer than us. And um, <clears throat> this one was a combination. It was a hymn on the Holy Spirit um, for renewal at the end of an event. But we wanted a song that allowed people to have breath and time. You know, in, in the midst of the excitement of a service or a concert, but time to think and pause. We wanted an instrumental that joined it up at the start and gave people space at the end. And we ended up taking um, Gabriel's oboe from, any, from The Mission, the movie The Mission. The movie The Mission with um, Robert any, De Niro. Um, and um, <laughs> any, any Morricone's beautiful melody, which I think is, is really, really so exquisite. We brought some of our musicians today. So Deborah Clemming will be playing that on the fiddle. So yes, tell me the instruments that we're going to see here now. Well, Deborah will be on the violin. Fine Canadian. Um, and she, yeah, she is oh. Canadian born. And then Maggie White, she will be a mandolin, I think. That's right. And then our good friend Patrick Darcy, who's also from Ireland, um, he'll be playing whistles. That's right. <laughs> and speaking to my boss here. <laughs> I'm okay. quite sure. You're agreeing with my boss? Yeah. Oh. I could visit with you all day. I just keep coming back. Well, and we love to come bring and visit the you. children you so next time. I know. Can you believe that? Well, they may make an awful lot of noise, and I was just commenting that they probably would do a number in these. The wrong things. color furniture. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Keith and Kristen Getty, a gift to the body of Christ, and now to this half hour, I'm going to let you go over there and join all those other instruments. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, remind our folks. So I haven't even told you yet that this marvelous production is at our e store. Keith and Kristen Getty, Modern and Traditional Hymns, live at the Gospel Coalition. And we are now going to hear Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. 